seven things to never say to a contractor. Or I could call this video seven common ways that contractors can screw you, take advantage of you, get the best of you. If you are looking to hire a contractor, big or small job, you need to watch this video because I'm going to share with you insight, street smart, signal, truth, wisdom that can help you against this mighty, mighty giant contractors because they are the source of so much anxiety, stress, problems in the world of real estate. They are masters at being able to extract the maximum amount of profit and of materials and of resources from you and giving the least amount back. Because this is what they do all day. They negotiate deals whereby they're the ones that are ahead. So what I'm hoping to do in this video is to educate you and put you into a position not so you can take advantage of contractors. I'm a huge fan of people making a profit but instead to make sure you don't get screwed. This is almost like a defensive training as opposed to an offensive training. And as you can tell, I'm probably gonna offend some contractors. That's a small price to pay to share the truth with you. You see, I've been a part of transactions with literally hundreds and hundreds of contractors. I've been screwed by a ton of them. I know just about every trick they got in the book because I've learned it the hard way. But also, indirectly, through mentoring and coaching those across North America, I've been a part of thousands of other contractors' worlds. And so I've seen their tricks. And so I'm uniquely qualified to educate you on how to avoid getting screwed by a contractor. I'm Phil Pustiofsky, by the way. I'm a real estate investor, but also, as I just mentioned, a mentor and coach to those all across North America. Best-selling author of a couple of books. My first book, How to Be a Real Estate Investor, I give away for free in the top right corner of these videos. My second book, more for intermediate and experts, is called Real Estate Investing Gone Bad, where I share with you what not to do. In fact, I have a story or two about contractors in there. And this is the number one YouTube channel on real estate investing in the world. And the reason is because I share with you wisdom and knowledge you'll hear nowhere else. And partially the reason why I can do that is because I have as much or more experience than literally any human being alive in this particular niche of working with residential real estate investing. And the work of contractors plays an enormous role in our business as a real estate investor and also as a real estate professional. So learning how to work with contractors is as important of a skill as just about anything else you'll ever learn as a real estate professional. So these are seven things to never say to a contractor and when you follow these rules you will be far better off in ensuring you don't get screwed. Number one, to tell a contractor you're the only one bidding the job. Always, always, always get a minimum, minimum of three. But see, the more the merrier. Five, seven, twelve, make sure that they are apples to apples comparisons. That in and of itself can be a challenge because each contractor will present a, maybe it'll all one number, or the next one will break it all out. You need to at least separate materials from labor. And that alone will, will help tremendously in you being able to uh, compare apples to apples. But always get three bits, minimum. And just when you think you've got it all figured out and you've got the perfect electrician and the perfect HVAC, still get three bits, minimum. I'd prefer you get more. But don't ever tell a contractor that they're the only one on a job. You do that, you have just given up a whole lot of power and a whole lot of position. You tell them, hey, there's no other contractors out here that do what you do. Don't ever say that. They need to think that there's always a few others you could hire. Always. That will keep them held accountable. Don't ever give them this inkling that they're the only one out there. Number two, my budget is, and you tell them what the budget is. Don't ever tell a contractor what your budget is. Don't say, hey, I'm hoping to get this job done for a total of $20,000. No! They're going to figure out how to make their bill $20,000. This is basic stuff, I know. I can't tell you how many times I have worked with people that have done this. Keep your mouth shut about what you want the budget to be. Instead, what you tell them is this. I have hired you to give me a bid because I need to know what it's going to cost to do these things. And you want them, like I said, to break up materials and labor. Now, on the subject of materials, this is a huge, huge screwing point 
for many contractors. They will upcharge you for the cost of materials. So, when you do get a bid back, you want to independently verify the cost of materials. I've had contractors, even in the past couple of weeks, stare me right in the eye and tell me the cost of materials is $8.50. And I pull it up on my phone and I show them it's $5.50. And I say, you can get out of here right now for lying to me. Don't ever lie to me about materials because I can verify that. It's a lot harder to verify labor. You have to sit there and, you know, clock them. So, uh, either way, as you can tell, I get a little intense about this. I don't put up with this crap with contractors. And they try to pull this crap on me. I can't imagine what they try to do the rest of this world. Because they know who I am, most of the ones I work with. Okay, so, don't ever tell them a budget. Have them come back to you. And make sure it's in such a way where you can independently verify certain things like materials. As well as be able to compare that to, uh, to the other bids you've gotten. Number three. You ask, can I get a discount if I pay you the entire amount up front? Oh boy, that is a dumb, dumb thing to say. Because if you pay a contractor up front, they're just not going to do a good job if they do any job at all. They'll just take your money and disappear. That's how it works in the world of contracting. They just laugh about deals like that. I've seen real estate trainers on YouTube teach this. What? I, I feel dumber for even having told you that. That's so stupid. So you have to be very careful about the payments. Yes, you have to pay some money up front. Usually they want the money up front to buy the materials and they want some money just to put it on their calendar. Now I try to, to buy the materials directly because I never trust them in buying materials. There are so many material scams that these, these contractors do, whether it be that they, they um, use materials from a previous job that were extra, where they buy cheaper materials than, than you had originally talked about, whether they steal the materials, which has happened, and all those things in between. So I like to be the one to buy the materials, and I know that there are some attorneys watching that would argue that at the moment you buy the materials, you cross the line, and now all of a sudden that contractor could be considered an employee. But that, to me, is completely bogus because the contractor is on contractor's license. They have other clients they're working with. I have the right to buy my own materials, and that's, I've never been stung by that before. So I like to buy my own materials because then I know it's been purchased correctly. It's the right kind of materials. And they try to pull off the lie, oh, we can get a bigger discount than you can, Phil. Bull. I can get just as good of a discount as they can. Just call up the material supplier. You can work it out. So if I give them a little bit of money up front, not the entire amount, then I do it and, and I pay them over the course of the job being complete and they don't get the rest of the money until the very end. And so this actually stung me a few weeks ago during the, the latest hurricane. We had to evacuate and we decided to leave a little bit early because we wanted to get ahead of some of the traffic. And so um, the person that was putting up all the hurricane shutters around our house, we had this huge house, right? Hurricane, there's like 50 hurricane shutters. Um, he was about three quarters of the way done and uh, we have to leave and so all the doors are locked, and I said, all right, here, man, uh, here's the money. Please finish this job. Don't screw me, because if you do, I'll come find you. You better believe he screwed me, little twerp. Uh, he didn't put up any more shutters as soon as we left the driveway. It's, at least that was what I, 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 uh, I guessed when I came home, and half the shutter, three-quarters of the shutters were on. The other quarter was not on. I did get my money back for the extra stuff I paid him. That did work out, but uh, that was because I got real serious with him. And uh, so, yeah, you pay somebody up front, they won't finish the job. Make sure you don't give them the entire amount until they are finished. Otherwise, they won't finish. It's that simple. It's how contractors work. I know you're thinking, yeah, but Phil, what about reviews on Angie's List and Home Advisor? Don't they want to serve the customer? <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Contractors serve the customer? No, no. They usually can't look past Friday afternoon. And so typically what they're doing is they're, they're, they're going from job to job. They don't think through all the consequences of screwing people. They just do it. I know that probably offended a lot of people, but that's the real world. I've worked with hundreds and hundreds of contractors. This is how they operate. And I'm jaded because this is the real world. This is not fantasy land. This is what happens when you pay up front. You don't get the job done. The job doesn't get finished. Number four, you tell them I'm not in a hurry. Never tell a contractor you're not in a hurry. Because you know what? They won't be in any hurry. And you'll discover that they'll be in less of a hurry than even you are. They'll go grab a bunch of jobs in between yours. They'll go fishing. They'll go doing whatever they're doing besides helping and getting your job done. Sure, you do have to communicate timelines. You have to say, look, all right, we're going to have to Gantt chart this thing out, and where we're at right now is you can't get involved until about three weeks from now. All right, that's reasonable, but you got to set dates and deadlines. 
you always got to set deadlines. And I always drive it into my contract with my contractors that what's going to happen is if they miss this deadline, they start to lose money. Now, I do give them a buffer zone. And so I don't set too sharp of a deadline, but I set a deadline, and if they're not finished by that time, then they start to lose money. It's the only way to get them to get their butts out of bed fast enough to actually get the job done. Chances are you as a real estate investor work infinitely harder day in, day out, month in, month out than they do. Now, they're going to go out, and they're going to put their three to four hours, and then they're going to be wrapped up. So uh, in, when I was living in Tennessee, I was going to get some materials at this material supplier. And uh, these material suppliers hang out with contractors, so they're pretty much, I guess, in the same realm. It was, it was uh, uh, Friday at 1 o'clock, and I walk in the office, and I'm waiting for the materials to you know, come down from the forklift and get put on the truck. And um, the phone rings, and then it rings again. And nobody's picking it up, but there are people in the office. So at some point, when I'm signing the invoice and, and giving my payment, I asked the person, I said, why is this phone continuing to ring and nobody's picking it up? And they said, oh, well, Phil, that's a Tennessee tradition. We, uh, we, we knock off at 1 o'clock on Fridays. And I said, but you, the, the phone's still ringing. Why don't you pick it up? Oh, well... Yeah, because then that could put some more work on us this afternoon. In fact, you're kind of holding this up. we got to get moving. One o'clock, Tennessee tradition. So if you don't tell contractors they're in a hurry, they ain't going to be in a hurry. And then that's going to ultimately piss you off at some point, even if it's not some deadline investment you're doing, even if it's a remodel on your own home. Nothing is more frustrating than a construction project that gets delayed and delayed and delayed. So set timelines and hold it to them. Number five, you tell the contractor, oh, you go ahead, you choose the materials, you take care of it, you're the professional. Oh boy. You do that and just expect to screw it. So I've been talking about materials throughout these other four, but this fifth one, I'm talking about the choice of the exact materials themselves. It is so important that you dictate. Now, you get education from them on what the differences are. And there's typically going to buy a high end, there's going to be a low end, there's going to be in the middle. You need to educate yourself, even if it takes time, even if it's a bit of a hassle to educate yourself on what needs to be done with those particular materials. Figure it out. And you choose it specifically, the manufacturer and everything in between. Because if you don't, they will cheat. They will use materials from their job, materials they have sitting in their house. They will change it all of a sudden on you. And so in my contract with my contractors, I specify the material they are to use. You know what? Sometimes I pay a little bit extra because I'm so anal about the materials, as you can see from this video. But you know what? It makes all the difference in the world that they don't put the wrong materials in. Because sometimes if they do it wrong in the beginning, it never gets better in the end. It's because they use the wrong materials in the, in the beginning. So you've got to be on point with this. You, I know that seems a bit uh, counterintuitive, you telling them that they can choose. But I guess I should have put they. I, I need you to choose the materials. You need to be specific on what it is that they're getting, where they're getting it from, and the pricing that they're getting it from. Because they will mark those things up, and they'll laugh about it. I've talked to many contractors that say, oh yeah, oh yeah, that cost me $250, but I charged him $500 for it. <laughs> yeah, this, these are real conversations I've had with contractors. They think it's funny. I think it's horrible. All right, so that's number five. You need to choose the materials. Number six. So the general contractor says to you, hey, I've got this group that uh, they can come in, do a great job. They're, they're not legal, and they'll just kind of come in and out, but what do you think? And you say the phrase, oh, I don't care who does the work, as long as it gets done. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be a part of that. Not just because of the patriotism and legal alien kind of talk, but also because of the gigantic amount of liability that could be on your shoulders if one of these people gets hurt. You need to be very diligent that any time a contractor does work on your job, that they have uh, evidence of an insurance policy. It usually says uh, A-C-O-R-D at the top, like Accord. And then at the bottom, you have additionally insured, and your company name is in there. You need to be named as additionally insured, or whoever the owner of the property is, in case anybody gets hurt. And you need to be very diligent about if it is a general contractor, which subs they're bringing on to make sure that they're all covered as well, or at least they're covered underneath that, uh, that blanket umbrella GC policy. You need to be diligent, especially on dangerous jobs, like roof work, like painting with ladders, anything where there's a, a, 
a, a huge amount of risk that could potentially go into what happens. Tree work, you got to be careful here. And you may pay a couple of extra dollars because you're working with someone who's insured and who's legal. But it's worth every penny because it helps you from a liability standpoint. And that also brings up this point in working with general contractors. You have to be critically, critically careful about making sure that the subs are getting paid. Me personally, I always pay the subs directly. If I am going to have a GC, I pay them, but I always pay the subs directly. Because if you pay the GC and they don't pay the underlying subs, now you have two bills. You paid the same work twice. Happens every day of the week where GCs get the money and they don't pay the subs. And they call, they're always on the phone, I'm so sorry, I'm working on it, all oh, that sub's crazy, oh, he's, he drinks a lot, oh, you have no idea his coke habit, Phil, uh, no. None of that crap. I work directly with the subs and directly with the GC. That way, there's no way the sub comes back and says, I'm following a lien against this property because I just did $3,000 of electrical work and didn't get paid. That's very serious. So you do care who does the work, and you need to be very diligent about how they get paid. My vote is that you pay each contractor separately, even if you have a GC. That will ensure that there's no way that they don't get uh, paid. And by the way, sometimes the GC is going to say, oh, but you're too busy to pay. I got news for you. I have several companies. I make an enormous amount of money. I have a very large, large asset base. I pay all of my bills on all of my companies. Because that way, there is absolutely no way that bookkeepers can go in and steal from me. I know you think that I'm just being paranoid. No, it's real world. Go look, go look in the annals of history. The oldest trick in the book is the bookkeeper, the one guy, you know, watching the books, stealing the money. That's like that, that was happening back in 3000 BC. That's just so old school. So I pay all the bills. Now I automate a lot of it using bill pay and those other features with uh, with online banking. But uh, I always have time to pay a subcontractor. Always have time for that. So that's an important feature as well. Making sure that you are working directly with the right people and you're paying them directly and they're insured correctly. Number seven, a gentleman's agreement, a.k.a. a handshake deal. Don't ever do that. Always, always, always put it in writing. I don't care if it's a simple one-page little piece of paper. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. In fact, uh, I've got a link to where you can download a copy of a contract that I use with contractors. Real simple, real easy that you can use to be able to ensure that at least it's put in writing what your understanding was, if for nothing else, so that you both don't forget what you agreed to. I tell that to contractors a lot. I say, this has nothing to do with trust, although I don't trust contractors. <laughs> but it's really because I want to make sure that you and I are on the same page and we don't get two months down the road or a month down the road and you and I are bickering over what we agreed to in the beginning. So be detailed. Put it in writing what it is that they're agreeing to do, what the cost of materials are, what the cost of labor is estimated, and all that stuff in between. Um, and by the way, another little tip, if the contractor is going to buy the materials, uh, then just have them provide receipts to prove each material cost. They can still screw you there by faking receipts, but it's a little bit harder and it's a little bit more lying in writing, which obviously that becomes more uh, of a criminal activity. But if you get it in writing, you at least know a starting point and you can always add an addendum if things change. But keep it in writing. No handshake deals with contractors. You do that, you're looking for a screw-in. So those are seven things to never say to a contractor. And although I got a little bit of detailed, in a way this stuff's kind of simple, right? It's a lot more difficult in the real world to do all this because it takes time. And oftentimes we're in a hurry in life and we try to take shortcuts. Don't take shortcuts with contractors. You will regret it. You've got to take the time to do this right. My mentor was great at this. He instilled this into me. You've got to be very, very careful when you hire contractors. Believe it or not, a lot of contractors have a criminal background. I know that doesn't mean they're a bad person. There's plenty of wonderful criminals. But when it comes to doing business transactions, it's at least important for you to know the kind of history they have from an ethics perspective, you know, from their morals and from their actions. And so oftentimes when people get out of prison, there's not a lot of job opportunities for them, but they can all become contractors. You wouldn't believe how often this happens. How often I ask a contractor I hire, hey, have you ever been to jail? Oh yeah, but that was like four years ago. That was a DUI. I'm, I'm totally clean now, Phil. I'm, I'm, I'm much better. So this is very, very real. 
uh, I, I often uh, you know, have a Freudian slip and as I'm trying to refer to uh, contractors, I call them criminals. They're not all that bad, but you've got to understand how serious this really is. That if you don't take this as serious as you should, you are going to at least get taken advantage of, they'll get the best of you. And again, I'm not looking for you to try to screw them either. They need to make a profit. I have a great video on why making a profit is such a good thing in business. So I encourage them to make a profit, but not to do so at the expense of you where they go so far above and beyond. I just got a bill for my electrician, for example. $95 an hour. Dude has time to text me pictures of the latest monster fish he just caught on his fly rod, and then he sends me that invoice this morning. $95? He's been $75 an hour for at least the last two years. So. As you can see, even the people you work with, they're always trying to get at you. So you got to be on your toes. All right, well, this is the not-so-fun part about being a real estate investor, dealing with contractors. Yeah, you got to have some thick skin. I used to be a whole lot nicer and kinder until I got screwed a bunch, and now I'm tough. Now I don't put up with it. And that's where I want you to be from the end of this video on. I want you to be tough. I don't want you to put up with this crap. I want you to say the least amount possible to make sure you get these deals done and that they follow through on their promises. All right, well, I'm Phil Fustiowski with Freedom Mentor, a little more intense than usual. I hope you learned quite a bit. If you have any questions, comments, put them down here. I'm all ears. I love talking about contractors. It's a big part of our business. If you want to learn more about how you can become a first-class real estate investor, it's so that you, you can leapfrog all of those years of headaches and heartaches of making mistakes, and you want to have that fast track to success, uh, feel free to uh, look into our apprentice program where, uh, where my team and I work with people one-on-one -on -one and we transform them into money-making real estate machines. Many of my apprentices out there these days are among the best in America. I mean, they're leading their respective markets and they are dominating right now. And you can be one of those too. So thanks again for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one.